earlier work on creativity uh, suffered from the fact that you gave people certain tasks, but you had no standard or criterion to judge whether what they were doing was really creative. For example, a standard task that's been used in some of that research is, uh, tell us as many uses as you can think of for a brick. Well, some people can think of five uses for a brick, some people can think of 15 uses for a brick, like weighting down papers on a desk, or grind up the brick and use it for grinding power, or whatever. But is the person who thinks of 15 uses for a, a brick more creative in any serious sense than a person who thinks of five uses for a brick? How do you know? We took a different tack. We said, there are some discoveries which everybody agrees were creative. We have them in the, in the history books. We have the pictures of the people who made them. That's our definition of creativity. If you have your picture in the history book, you did something creative. Right? So then we said, we'll study those actual historical events. So we studied how Kepler got his third law. And then we built a computer program. We said, if we give this computer program the same data that Kepler had, and the same problem that Kepler took, will it find Kepler's law? Well, the answer is yes. And then we took some people in the laboratory, students, and we said, if we give them Kepler's data about the distances of the, star, of the planets and the period of the revolution, will they discover Kepler's law? And four out of 14 of them did, without knowing what they were discovering, just numbers, X and Y. Uh, then we had material for studying the processes of creativity, and then we knew that what we were studying was creative, because nobody wants to cut Kepler's picture out of the book and say he wasn't creative. 